In this video, I'll use the one-period macroeconomic model to demonstrate the equilibrium effects from a destruction in capital stock. In particular, I will describe and illustrate the impact of a destruction on capital stock on general equilibrium employment, wages, and real GDP. Capital stock, remember, are machines and physical goods used in the production of other goods. Capital stock can be destroyed, for example, from natural disasters or war. I will start by drawing the labor market equilibrium. In the market for labor, we have the quantity of labor or employment on the horizontal axis, and we have the wage on the vertical axis. The labor demand curve is the marginal product of labor. The marginal product of labor depends positively on the level of capital stock and the state of technology, Z. Let's put an upward sloping labor supply curve which depends on the consumer's decisions for consumption and leisure. Here's our original equilibrium. N1, W1. Let's also draw the level of production in the economy, or real GDP. We're going to draw the production function. We're going to put employment, or labor, on the horizontal axis. We're going to put real GDP, or output, on the vertical axis. And our production function increases at a decreasing rate the function looks something like output depends positively on the state of technology and a function of capital stock and labor. Let's take this exact same N1, put it right here, and if we go up to the production function, we can see what level of production we will have in the economy, Y1. If there's a destruction of capital stock, that means we have a decrease in K. With less capital stock to work with, labor is less productive, and therefore the marginal product of labor will be lower. We will illustrate that with a leftward shift in the marginal product curve, i.e. the labor demand curve. Call this ND2. We can label our new equilibrium level of wages W2, N2. We can see there's gonna be less employment in equilibrium, lower wages in equilibrium, over here on the production function, we also have a downward shift. Because there's a decrease in capital stock, there's going to be a decrease in the level of output that is able to be produced. And so we'll have a new PP, I'm sorry, we'll have a new production function that looks something like this, K2N. Now let's take our equilibrium N2, put it back on this graph on the production function, Go up to the new production function. Here we have Y2. And we can see there's a decrease in Y or a decrease in real GDP. Back in the labor market, we can see we had a decrease in wages and a decrease in employment. That concludes this video.